Echo's Box Podcast is not meant to be or claiming to be a good place for therapeutic advice. The host is not a licensed therapist and is not offering any services or advice related to mental health in a professional manner. The content discussed on Echo's Box is commonly highly explicit due to the real nature of expressing honest emotions. While we don't mean to offend anyone, the reality is these discussions might be triggering to many people. Out of respect for all, please do not listen if this content isn't right for you, and forgive us if you have a poor experience. Keep your brain healthy. Hey everyone, welcome back to Echo's Box. This is episode 31. It's over Delta 9000, which is just a dumb title I came up with because I am stoned right now. And that's on purpose. I'm not, I'm not being negligent. This podcast is going to be an interesting one. We are talking all about the marijuanas today, uh, specifically the chemical compound known as THC or tetrahydrocannabinol. So THC is the big psychoactive component that is in marijuana. So before we get started with all this, we got to establish a couple of things. First is, remember, I'm a little stoned, so I may not be articulating things super well, but I'm going to do my best and chop it up in post. Second off, um, we actually have to understand, one, why why are we talking about this at all? And two, you know, where where does all this stuff come from and how does it relate to each other? So I know it's kind of vague. Uh, so let's start with the reason I'm doing this as an episode. The The primary reason is because there are a lot of derivative compounds now out there in the world. Uh, one of the most common ones that has been popular over the last five years is Delta-8 THC. And a lot of times when people see that, they're like, what the hell is that? Some fake synthesized marijuana. We don't want that shit. It's not as good as the real shit. Or it sounds scary to adults and, and parents or whoever who are concerned that it can be got at a gas station and don't know what it is. So just there's a lot of fear mongering about these other hybrid compounds, things like Delta-8, Delta-10, HHC, and the lot. And we're going to go over pretty much all of them today. I'm going to exclude a few that I'll mention when I when I give a list. But we're going to go into pretty much the nitty gritty, as, as deep as I can go while still making it layman's terms, because I am not a chemist and I wanted to be a little intoxicated for fun on this episode. So uh, we are going to be using some big fancy chemical terms. If you don't know what they mean, Google them. I'm going to explain everything else that you do need to know, though. So a lot of this research has honestly been compounded by me over the last couple of years, but not me as in I did the research, but me as in I read all the all the white papers. But um, these are pretty commonly accurate in most FAQs now. If you go to any head shop or any kind of dispensary website that sells Delta 8 or other THC derivative products, they have pretty good FAQs that are well, accurate. They have their lab testing results. You know, some will herald some qualities over other as selling points to the nature of business. So do be careful uh, what sounds overly hyped. But as far as the science goes, everything seems to be pretty much in unison from what I can tell, uh, even over the last five years. If not, it's even better because the research has gotten better. So that is why we're doing this, why we're, we're talking about marijuana at all. I didn't just come on here to be like, oh, I'm a stoner, I smoke weed, you guys. That's fucking stupid. You guys already knew that if you've been listening. <laughs> so that's nothing new. Um, what is new, though, uh, is a lot of this information, especially if you have never thought about marijuana in your life as a plant or otherwise. So let's start there with the plant. So there are two plants that we really care about, and they're both cannabis plants, or at least that's how they're classified federally, and that's the marijuana plant and the hemp plant. Now, some people refer to this as the cannabis plant or the marijuana plant, but the federal government, at least in the United States, call, classifies them both as a cannabis plant. And the differentiator between what is marijuana and what is hemp is based on how much THC the plant produces. So THC being the psychoactive compound. And the reason this is important to the feds is because they're regulating marijuana as a scheduled substance. So this, it's illegal, at least at a federal level, without other authorizations. Usually like science labs and stuff can, can get a federal clearance for 
the scheduled substance level of marijuana, but as a as a prescription, that's not a thing you can do. Um, in states where it's federally legal, it works based on the state's governance. So maybe it's medically legal only, which means you don't really get a prescription, but you can get a recommendation. You can do everything I pretty much talked about in my last episode. You should go check that out. Man, I can still do callbacks. Awesome. So yeah, check out the last episode if you want to learn more about the, the medical marijuana situation. But even in a state where it's it's completely legal that is all regulated and mandated by the state technically the feds could still arrest you for having marijuana so that's just how it is it is completely illegal except under the farm bill more specifically the hemp farm bill from 2018 so this bill allowed for some different derivatives based on you know, well the chemical structure of the thc compound to exist so this manifests in all sorts of ways we've had many, many cannabinoid research stuff done over the years. This stuff isn't new in terms of how it exists. Some of it's new in terms of testing and in terms of uh, how it's used in in our products, vapes, edibles, you name it, uh, infusions, whatever have you. All that is new, but we, this is not, I won't call it basic chemistry because I fucking suck at chemistry. It's probably like middle tier or higher chemistry, but it's not like super advanced. We're not building nukes, right? It's just... It, it takes some effort, uh, and anybody with a good bit of chemistry knowledge and some good skills with distillation or uh, or if you know about your acids and bases, like you may be able to derive some of these from hemp yourself. And, and that's what's important and why we need to know about these two particular plants. So while it is illegal most places to grow a marijuana plant, it is legal pretty much everywhere to grow a hemp plant because a hemp plant will contain, I think, 0.3% of THC. Now, the default compound of THC that we're talking about, this this tetrahydrocannabinol, I'm, I'm going to stop saying that, it's THC. Um, too many words for my brain. Anyway, the, the default THC compound that most marijuana users are used to experiencing in their brain whenever they smoke marijuana or, or eat it or whatever um, is Delta 9 THC. Now, a, a lot of these compounds that I'm going to talk about today are, are also naturally occurring in the marijuana and hemp plants. But uh, while you are smoking Delta 9 and technically THCA and THCP or, or whatever else that we are normally synthetically deriving, while that all does exist within the plant, the primary thing that is causing the psychoactive plant in normal, regular marijuana is Delta-9. So that's, we need to establish that first. So marijuana plant is Delta-9 THC. So whenever you see Delta-9 anything, you can know that that is regular THC. That's what we're talking about. The other thing is to establish is CBD. So CBD occurs in both hemp and marijuana plants. In fact, as you might well recognize, the requirement to be a hemp plant is just 0.3% of regular Delta 9 THC. So both plants contain the same chemical compounds. It's just the amounts of each. So CBD is another chemical compound. And what we've learned about uh, CBD over the last couple of years is that, well, it can be kind of recreated into new THC structures that are completely legal under this 2018 farm bill. So that's federally legal. Some of these compounds, as I'll allude to, are not legal in every state. Some states that have a uh, complete like where marijuana is legal, I think Nevada or maybe, um, I can't remember. There, there are a couple of legal states that ban Delta-8 but allow regular THC. So states can still ban some of these substances on their own. But federally covered under the Farm Bill, almost, everything, almost every single compound I'm going to talk about today, except for one, is completely federally legal. So... Even if you're in a completely legal, non-legal state, like where marijuana isn't legal, it can be sold unless the state outlaws it because it's federally legal. So it's kind of the flip it on its head where instead of a step, state making something legal, but the feds can still get you, it's legal federally until the state stops you in, in some of these cases. So everything here is can be bought on the internet today, uh, except for regular Delta 9, technically. We'll talk about that in a minute too. So... We're going we're gonna to go down the list. So to start, let's introduce the list of all of the compounds we're going to cover today. So the first one we're going to talk about is going to be Delta-8. Then we're going to talk about Delta-10. Then we're going to talk about HHC. Then we're going to talk about THCO, or sometimes known as THCOA. After that, we're going to talk about THCP, then THCA, and then we're done. 
So lots of lots of T's and H's and C's with some some various letters. Now I know there are a couple of other new derivatives. There's always new derivatives. Everybody's getting crazy with it. There's THCV and THCB now, and all this. It just I'd, we're, the whole point of this episode is to give you a good understanding of how these compounds are existing, how we get them, how we derive them from CBD and kind of go from there. So whenever you see a new one in the future, you'll, you won't be fear mongered anymore. And you'll also know the right questions to ask to figure out, you know, things like potency and you know, how it's created at all, because they are all essentially the same chemical structure. We've just flipped some things around as you'll see. Now to get into any of these things, we need to talk about CBD. So we've established Delta nine, Delta nine is just normal weed. The way this works is it has a double carbon bond that starts on the ninth atom ring of the THC compound. So that's where we get the name Delta 9, ninth ring of the carbon compound. So we're going to go ahead and set that up because that's going to be important later. So you don't, you don't have to worry about carbon bonds and having to know what that is. Just understand that there is a chemical structure. It's got atom atomic rings to it in its chemical compound structure for, for each of the atoms that compose it. And there is a double carbon bond structure that is on the ninth atomic ring or the ninth atom ring in the THC structure. So that, that's where we get the nine from. That's, that's all I want to say about that. Uh, don't want to dive too much more into the chemistry, but uh, one, because I don't know, and two, because it, it would be boring. Anyway, CBD, let's talk about CBD. So what is CBD? CBD is cannabidol. So where we can recognize THC as tetrahydrocannabinol, CBD is just the cannabinol. Uh, I can't even say that word. C C uh, just CBD. That's why we're doing this. CBD, CBD, CBD. All right. So CBD is found naturally in marijuana. I'm going to read off my script, keep my, sh my, uh, my shit straight here. But uh, CBD is naturally found in marijuana. Um, it's also naturally found in the hemp plant, like I, I mentioned before. So usually the way we derive CBD to begin with is from the the hemp plant it just makes it simpler. We avoid most of the THC and we don't really have to synthetically create anything. So this is coming from a plant. Um, CBD is non-psychoactive. Remember, C THC is the psychoactive component, whereas just the cannabidol is not psychoactive at all. You cannot get high on CBD. Maybe you'll feel a little bit of a head rush or a head buzz if you vape it in like a, a cart because it's got some terpenes and other stuff in it that kind of burn your throat and make it feel like you're doing something weird. I, I remember when CBD first came out, some of my buddies would, would get carts of it and smoke it. And it was before I, I had ever smoked any kind of marijuana at all. They would smoke it and act like they were getting so high. And either they got some shit that was laced or they were absolutely placebo affecting themselves because I've had CBD and it doesn't do shit. Now, I say it doesn't do shit. It doesn't do shit in terms of the psychoactive experience. If you're looking to get high intoxicated stoned any other nomenclature you want to add in there for for your uh, intoxication level uh, cbd won't do that cbd does still provide some of the benefits though that we know cannabis to provide so things such as pain relief stress reduction um, can help with insomnia and sleep but it does all this without getting you high so CBD is actually a great alternative if you want to try it for some of those benefits that you would get out of regular marijuana without getting high. It's, it's a great option, especially if it works. I don't know if it, it really works for me that way because I have a hard time feeling those things, but I can tell you it didn't get me high and it felt okay. I have friends who, who use it and I, I know of several testimonials. They're everywhere. I mean, you don't have to take my word for it. You can take everybody else's, but it's pretty fact based on at least experience i think we should probably look into more research on it but cbd does tend to help people in those areas and and there's evidence for it um so i'm not sure how that convincing how convincing that is for you but at least from my perspective it seems like a decent alternative but that's not why it's interesting nor why it's important at least to me why that's important is because cbd is how we get into all of these other compounds technically you could modify the Delta 9 structure to get to any of these. Uh, the problem with that is you have to be able to grow marijuana plants. And a lot of the places that are doing this have those research licenses and can do that uh, or have some kind of state legality that allows for that. Um, but think about states and places that don't. Where they cannot grow marijuana plants, they can grow hemp plants. 
and from hemp plants we can get CBD. So if we can get other forms of THC from CBD, we kind of fly under the radar. We avoid the illegal compound that is Delta 9 and are able to modify it enough to get something that we can actually legally at least sell in most places or at least provide and not get any trouble with in some way. So one of the most popular cannabinoids that came out from this research from using hemp plants to get CBD and, and kind of going from there was Delta-8. So Delta-8 THC um, is super common. A lot of people know about Delta-8. I remember when it first came out, people would be like, oh, is it real weed or is that the Delta-8 shit? Or they would say things like, I've had bad experiences on Delta-8 or Delta-8 doesn't hit me like the other stuff does or whatever. And all of these people, at least in my experience, were people who were very, very infrequent marijuana users to begin with. Or were people who were just real snooty about their weed. Um, the reality is that Delta-8 doesn't have any other crazy effects. And again, we're talking about the chemical compounds. So let me back it up a bit because this is true of Delta-9 too. This is true of any drugs. Remember, children, we are talking about drugs. And unless you have a consistent, trustworthy source for your drugs, weird shit can always happen. Let me take you down a trip real quick. I have got this fantastic marijuana vaporizer from today's sponsor, Moonwalker. And don't worry, I'm not getting to an ad read yet, but we do have a little bit of a sponsorship, a sponsorship, sponsorship that we'll get into at the end of the video with Moonwalker. But I want to go ahead and talk about this vape pen I have because this vape pen is primarily Delta 8. It's got some mixtures of THCP and uh, I believe THCA which we're going to we're going to cover in this episode. It's great. It's super potent. I took a hit of it right before I started recording and I am having a hard time <laughs> keeping up with myself. It's great. Um but I've also got a regular Delta 9 cart that I was able to pick up from a store because it had abided by certain rules. Now you might think to yourself the Delta 9 cart should be better cuz it's just regular THC. No, it it sucks. I don't even want to use it anymore. The only reason I still use it is because it kind of has some effect to it. And I don't want to waste my money that I spent. Um, but otherwise, I'll never buy that again. Um, and that's wild because I have experiences where I can buy the legal variant of Delta 9 edibles, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, and that's just regular Delta 9. And it is great. It's fantastic. Uh, and then I've also had Delta 8 carts that suck. It's not about the compound. It's about the product we're buying, right? So you could have had a very valid, terrible experience with something like Delta-8 and never wanted to do it again because Delta-8 always makes you feel bad. It, it was probably the product. And especially if it was early on in those days, it was probably not only the product, but the safety of the product. So del there's nothing wrong with Delta-8. That's what you learn today is all of these compounds are actually really good. And some are just better than others. But there's nothing wrong with any of them. What can be wrong is the safety of the products and the quality of the products that we are using. If you've never done drugs before, you wouldn't know that. And if you have only done drugs with friends and people you trust and haven't been in sketchy situations, then you also may not know that. So keep in mind, it's the product. So if you tried Delta 8 a while ago, a couple of years ago when it was crazy, everybody's talking about it, and we're like, oh, this shit sucks, try to get now. Bet you'll feel different. Bet you will have a different experience. May not be better. Weed's not for everybody in general. If you don't like weed, don't try it. That's another dumb thing. Um, but, uh, yeah. So, Delta 8. We, we all have kind of heard of it at this point. At least if you're at least remotely in the sphere. So, I've got a Delta 8 pin that's great. But it's, it's not just Delta 8. And, and that's probably why it's great. And so, we'll talk about that a little bit more later. Anyway, so... Delta-8 is, uh, the, the way Delta-8 works is similar to THC. So similar that it's the same compound, uh, fundamentally. They're the same chemical structure. There's just some slight variations to how certain elements sit into the chemical structure. So Delta-8 binds less to the CB1 receptor in your brain, I believe. The CB1 and CB2 receptors are both impacted by regular Delta-9 and that's kind of what can help make you high. So it binds less, not not at all, just less to the CB1 receptor, which makes it a little bit less potent than regular Delta-9. 
but molecularly they are exactly the same. The reason for the eight, as we kind of mentioned before, is to deal with the carbon bonds. So within the THC molecule, again, that the atom ring, the atomic ring where the double carbon bond falls in regular delta nine as the ninth atom ring. In delta eight, well, it is the eighth atom ring. That's it. That's the difference. The double carbon bond is on the eighth atom ring instead of the ninth atom ring. And the practical change that has is to the CB1 receptor. All right. So delta eight actually occurs naturally in the degradation of a marijuana plant. Like I said, all of, almost all of these, not all of them, but almost all of these compounds can be found in regular marijuana. So if your marijuana plant starts degrading over time, the levels of, t of delta-8 go up because the structure changes. So this is a naturally occurring compound in a marijuana plant already. You are already smoking it when you're smoking marijuana, especially if you get an old grody joint, right? Um, but that's not how we get it in our products today. There's not enough that gets created to extract it and create a delta-8 pin, right? Instead, it's kind of hybrid, and that's true of a lot of these things. These things are hybrid synthetically produced. So what that means is they are usually created from CBD. So CBD is naturally extracted from a hemp plant, and then the CBD is then turned into this new THC compound by means of distillation, adding an acid base or, or whatever it is, whatever the derivation method in chemistry for this particular compound um, to create it is done. So Delta 8 is made from CBD. And at the time of recording, this is federally legal everywhere, but it is illegal in some states, like I mentioned. So actually you can't get Delta 8 legally in some states, but in others you can, and the feds aren't going to pull you over for it, at least at the time of this video. Always look into your laws. All right, so that's Delta 8. What about Delta 10? Well, Delta 10 is also a byproduct of plant degradation, marijuana plant degradation. And just like Delta 8, it's hard to extract because there's not high level levels of it, so it's derived from CBD. Pretty much the, the same. Uh, the difference is uh, in the derivation of Delta 8, 10 is kind of the same thing as the same derivation between 8 and 9. It's that the double carbon bond is now on the 10th atom ring instead of 8 or 9. Okay, so we're just swapping the double carbon bond around on these, these structures. So the, the part you care about in this, though, probably has more to do with the, the effect. So with delta 8, it's a little less potent because it's not grabbing on that CB1 receptor, but otherwise it's pretty damn close to delta 9 closer than you, you might have originally thought. Um, and I guess out in the, the pothead world, uh, Delta-8 would be referred to as closer to an indica strain, whereas Delta-10 has similar psychoactive effects, but it's less potent than both Delta-8 and Delta-9. And some people colloquially call it uh, or equate it to being similar to a sativa strain where Delta-8 is the indica. I don't feel a difference between strains personally i know a lot of people do and that's a big topic um that's why i usually just smoke hybrid but i'll smoke whatever you give me and i tend to feel the same uh it's just the quality of the product and the potency for me most of the time but that's what a lot of uh people have come to kind of refer to them to give them some kind of frame of reference if you've smoked weed before you'll and you hear oh delta 10 is kind of like a sativa then if that's something that impacts you and how you smoke and different strains are important for from your perspective then that may be relatable to you but bottom line in terms of potency is delta 9 is still at the top in our rankings right now delta 8 is just below it and delta 10 is just below both of them all right so that's kind of where we're at i'll give you a full breakdown towards the end so if you care if you just want to see what's more potent you can go to my list at the end of the you can just skip ahead all the the chemistry bullshit that's okay i would understand all right on to HHC. Here's where we get uh, fancy with our chemistry. It's not just deriving compounds from CBD anymore. Um, it is making a brand new compound that is not really THC at all anymore. HHC stands for hexahydrocannabinol, where THC is the tetrahydrocannabinol. HHC cannot be derived from hemp or cannabis plant directly. All right, so now we're dealing with something that's a little bit more synthetic. Instead, it is usually created 
from delta h from delta 8 thc how do, how does that work all right so now with with the the hybrid syn synthesis of delta 8 and delta 9 we're going pretty much straight from the hemp plant to cbd and then from cbd we'll create our delta to 8 or delta 10 for hhc we actually have to do all that get to our delta 8 and then from our delta 8 we can create hhc how is it made instead of the double carbon bond ring thing being moved around hhc is actually created by adding two active catalysts into the delta 8 compound usually it's some kind of heavy metal compound i think uh, i don't have that in my notes but just off off the rip remembering i think that's what it is you insert those two catalysts into the compound and what happens is it, we remove those carbon atom structures completely instead of having a double carbon bond we add two hydrogen bonds now the first h in uh the hhc stands for hexa where it was originally tetra so the tetrahydro is four hydrogen the hexahydro is six hydrogen so we're getting rid of the double carbon bond and adding in two more hydrogen uh bonds and that's how we get HHC instead of THC. So now it becomes a, a, almost a completely new structure, but it is based on the THC compound. We, we get it through a process of changing a THC compound by adding those heavy metals. So we're, we're creating something that's similar, but it's a little bit more different than just going from delta 9 to delta 8, right? All right. All the chemistry aside, what's it do? You know, how strong is it? HHC is much stronger than delta 8 and delta 10 but it's still a little bit weaker than Delta-9. So it's somewhere between Delta-8 and Delta-9. Some say it lasts longer than Delta-9, though. So maybe you have a, a high that's a little bit less intense than a, a smoking a regular joint or something. Um, but that's also variable on how you take it. I've had some very potent HHC gummies that are just wild. Um, but then I have like the gummies that I usually take now that are Delta-9, and I feel about the same on either one and maybe one lasts longer than the other, but they're edibles, you know, and maybe smoking has a different effect. I personally haven't really noticed that much of a difference because it all varies on the product. I've had, had some crazy stuff. I'll give you a funny story at the end if I remember uh, about these 500 milligram edibles uh, making me think of poor Tom, Tom Segura. Joey, Joey got him with them, them hash oil pills. Anyway. That was a the deep internal reference for your mom's house podcast listeners, or maybe it was two bears. No, no, that was just a comedy sketch. Anyway, I'm going on a tangent now. Welcome to being stoned and doing a podcast by yourself. Hope you're enjoying the trip so far. Onwards and upwards. That's HHC. So currently where we're at is we got Delta eight is a little less strong than Delta nine, uh, or I guess we can just go in order. Delta nine, HHC, Delta eight, Delta ten. That's where we're going in terms of potency, but they're all chemically very similar. All right, here's a controversial one to keep the keep things flowing. THCO, sometimes known as THCOA, but we're going to just refer to it as THCO for clarity here. It's similar to HHC in the sense that it has to be chemically derived from delta A or delta 9 molecules, but instead of replacing the carbon bond with a hydrogen bond we're keeping the same base structure what we do is we add an acetic acid to it so in this case it's acetic and or ooh, i can't say this acetic and hydra this converts delta a or delta 9 into thco so what ends up happening is this leaves the thc structure around it has the same base structure as delta 8 but the added acetic acid makes this now a derivative con a compound so it's it's just thc pretty much delta 8 thc with this acetic acid to it so thco is actually more potent than regular delta 9 i think some stats say it's three times more potent or whatever but it takes a little bit longer to feel the effects or at least colloquially that's that's what's said on a lot of faqs we'll say that uh but it, the point is it's about three times stronger What's hilarious about that, this is as a result of this potency issue, the DEA has clarified and stated that THCO specifically is not covered by the farm, bear, farm bill. And this is hilarious because we're about to talk about THCP, which is about 30 times stronger than Delta 9, and it's still completely legal. Now, 
You can still usually find THCO at most shops because when it was first made and distributed, it was covered under the farm bill. So there's still stocks and supplies and you can even go to websites online and find them, find them and buy this. It's gray market stuff. You probably shouldn't. You could go to jail. It's just like buying Delta 9 online at this point. The feds have made their stance very clear. The DEA is not cool with THCO. It's hilarious <laughs> because of what I'm about to, to talk about next, but... Um, that is that's how it is. So generally avoid THCO. It's a, it's stronger than Delta Nine. It's more potent, which is cool if you want like a, a slightly more psychoactive experience. And psychoactive as in it gets you high. By the way, it's not a psychedelic. It doesn't work the same way as like mushrooms or acid. For those of you who don't use a lot of marijuana, that's not how marijuana works. Uh, but it is psychoactive in that it causes a change in your brain that causes you to feel different things. In this case, the feeling of being high or elevated as Stoner Gump calls it. Love Stoner Gump. Shout out to Stoner Gump. If you want to come on the podcast, we, we're we all astronauts here. Love it. All right. So THCP, that's what we're going to talk about next. THCP is just like THCO, but a lot stronger. Um, and it's not made the same way. So when I say it's a lot like THCO, just in the circumstance that it exists and that it is synthetically derived uh, as a cannabinoid from another cannabinoid. So like I need, just like with HHC, these last two have required the existence of Delta-8 or Delta-9. Um, so it has to come from that existing THC structure first. But the main difference between THCP and regular Delta-9 THC is the pentyl side chain. So it's the pentyl side chain is extended to heptyl. So this is going from five to seven. So we're adding two more uh, into compound or structures into this side chain. In layman's terms, or as close to layman's terms I can possibly say, uh, this means the carbon side chain structure, the, the thing that holds out the carbon bonds, I think is what that is. The carbon side chain structure goes from having five in it to having seven elements in it. Not elements as in elements when water, fire, and earth, but elements as in components to it. So it goes from having five to two, which means there are two more sections of the carbon chain. In practicality, kind of like I mentioned a moment ago, this means that THCP ends up to be significantly stronger than Delta 9. Some studies saying 30% stronger, making it by far the strongest derivative strain or whatever you want to call it. Uh, so where THCO is completely federally illegal, the DEA has made a line, drawn a line saying made it completely clear, no THCO. THCP is cool. <laughs> so it had nothing to do with the strength, I guess, but maybe adding the acid base wasn't enough to make it a derivative. Uh, but then you could argue if it's coming from Delta-8, maybe it's fine. I don't know. The feds just said they're not cool with it. And, you know, feds are always cool, right? THCP... <laughs> losing my mind here thcp is completely legal and uh as you'll learn about later when i tell you where to get some of these fantastic marijuana substances um you'll learn how awesome thcp actually can be uh, when it's mixed in small amounts on to the next though we've got one more thca so thca has actually been in the news a lot lately because the daa has made some comments on it um so just Keep your eyes peeled for this because this could go one of two ways real quick. But THCA stands for tetrahydrocannabinolic acid. This occurs naturally in normal cannabis plants, just like some of these others do, but some of these others do not. So, so far what we get, if you're worried about the natural uh, of all of these things is they're all essentially synthetically derived. Even the Delta nine uh, that is coming in under the percentages is synthetically derived to a degree. It is naturally derived in the sense that it occurs naturally in the plants. We're getting it from already, both Delta nine, Delta eight, Delta 10 and um, THCA all occur naturally in the plants. Whereas Delta or whereas HHC, THCO and THCP require you to derive them from an existing THC compound, be that Delta-8 or Delta-9. So, um, everything's hybrid synthesis is kind of where I was going with that. If you're not just getting regular Delta-9 from a marijuana plant, it's going to be hybridly synthesized from CBD. THCA, however, is completely natural. It's derived from raw, unheated cannabis. 
except for in the cases that I just mentioned where we're having to actually infuse it and in things at a higher level. So a fresh leaf from a marijuana plant might have more THCA on it. But usually the way we derive it is once again from a hemp plant. So all of these, if they're, if they're naturally occurring, they're derived from a hemp plant. And then we have a synthetic, a hybrid synthetic process that just takes one layer away. And we go from CBD to one of these compounds. And in the case of the other ones, it is still a hybrid. It's still coming from c CBD, but then we have two layers before we get to the compound. THCA there's a, is uh, like Delta-8 and Delta-9, or Delta-8 and Delta-10, where there's only one layer. Or Delta-9, too, in the case of uh, the lower percentages, like I just mentioned. I know that felt like a loop, but I just wanted to make it pretty clear. Um, but while we usually distill it uh, and reinfuse it, through a hemp plant, uh, THCA is just the acidic form of THC. That, that's as simple as you can put it. It is, it is THC. It is normal delta nine THC, and it's the acidic form. But it is completely non psychoactive. So the fact that it is the acid form, it's a different. It's like water and ice. Uh, water is great. You can chew it and bite it, but it probably won't quench your thirst. Drinking water will quench your thirst. That is what T THCA is the ice of uh, to Delta 9 THC in terms of ice and water, if that makes any sense. It makes sense to my brain. Um, so it's non-psychoactive until you heat it up. So that's the, that's the caveat. As soon as you heat it up, it starts to be decarboxylated or decarbed for short. Um, it, if you get it heated to a certain point, it decarbs into regular Delta 9 THC. This means you can buy THCA vapes or flour that is infused with THCA and it'll just burn and be a regular fucking joint, right? It'll be a regular fucking Delta 9 THC pen. It is just Delta 9 THC. That's all THCA is once it is burned. On its own, though, it's non-psychoactive. So if you were to chew on some Delta or some THCA salt, or what, I don't fucking know. It, nothing would happen. Uh, you may get some of the effects similar to CBD. That's up for debate in studies. But uh, once it's heated, it gets you high. <laughs> and most of the time we're heating it up anyway, right? Unless it's a gummy or something. Uh, so a THCA gummy may not be a good idea. Because it won't, may not do much for you. It may be a great idea if you're not looking to get, to get high. Um, so all that being said, uh, the only difference between how potent THCA is compo compared to Delta-9 has purely to do with your material that you're using. So if it's flour, it depends on how much is actually uh, infused into that flour. And then it also depends on how much decarbs when you're burning it in a pipe or a joint or however you're, you're burning it. If it's in a vape, if the vape is configured correctly, it'll already be burning it as a weight, as a, in a rate that is decarbing it, the THCA at a level that makes it potent if they were smart about it anyway. Uh, so you don't really have to think about it, but it's also possible that maybe the percentage of THCA in the product is lower. And I'll give a great example of that in a moment when we talk about our partners over at Moonwalker, but I'm going to, I'm not going to do that now. We're not going to do, do ad read in the middle show. It'd be close to the end, but right before I give you the good stuff. Yeah. That's how we do ads. <laughs> I'm so stupid. Oh my God. All right. Bottom line, all of these products even CBD have some kind of active chemical component to it that associates it with marijuana because they all basically come from the same plant or at least the sister plant thereof. And any product that you get online or in a local shop that's not, you know, just regular weed, in which case you're just dealing with a drug dealer or you're in a, in a legal state and it is just at your dispensary. But otherwise, any of these products usually contain 0.3% or less of Delta-9 THC and then contain one of these other components. There's crazy workarounds for all that, as we'll see. Uh, but the, the workarounds are nonetheless scientifically accurate with what needs to be supported. Um, but if you've ever considered using any of these, um, they all will make you fail a drug test. And that's really important. Even CBD will cause you to fail a drug test. It will test as positive for THC, even though it is not THC. So keep that in mind. Many folks don't know that, especially the ones that are fear-mongering stuff. They'll be like, it's not this. You know, some people have, have even used the fear in another direction. Instead of making it fear-mongering, they're being like, hey, man, 
it, it'll get you high and you can pass a drug test. It totally doesn't. I can speak from firsthand experience. I've taken HHC gummies and failed a drug test the next day. Um, I knew that that would happen, though. I wasn't ignorant to it. But I, I can attest that that is true because even though I expected the result to be true, I also did the test and found out that it is true. Um, so you can get almost any of these products um, in a standard smoke shop. Um, and even though that's true, while they are compliant with the farm bill, they are not uh, circumventing the DEA standards for drug testing. So with all of that being said, and now that we have an understanding of what these products are, I want to introduce you to my partners at Moonwalker. So Moonwalker is supporting the show today through you. Uh, in other words, this isn't really a sponsor, more so as an affiliate that I trust. So I'm purposefully putting this forward to do some of my own affiliate marketing to basically give you a way to support the show directly without me having to like make merch or do something weird because this is just a baby side project. So if you want to get high and support Echo's Box podcast, go check out Moonwalker. So Moonwalker is really great. I don't really have like an ad read form, but I do want to call out a couple of very specific products. So I've been using Moonwalker since 2020. I've tried a couple different services. Um, you know, I, 3 Kai was really cool. Um, some random head shops here and there. I've tried local products. Uh, and nothing has stuck with me the same way Moonwalker has. And some of those are really good and I would recommend them again. But I, I chose Moonwalker specifically because they have been kind of not only developing consistent products, but also kind of staying with the meta. So all the things we've talked about today, they have good information on. They also have good products to work with on. Um, and some other interesting things like Amanita muscaria mushrooms, which I can talk about in another episode. Um, it's another one of those things that doesn't work the way you think it does and has had some controversy, uh, especially in the psychedelic community. People arguing about dumb shit, basically. Just, it's all drugs. I wish we could kind of kind of agree on that. But with Moonwalker, it's not drugs getting from your sketchy drug de- that you're getting from your sketchy drug dealer. Ooh, man, if this was a real ad read, I'd be terrible at it. Uh, but my point is that these are like verified lab tested products. The edibles are fantastic. I, I'm going to be recommending today the Delta 9 gummies, the black raspberry flavor specifically. So this is a uh, totals 250 milligram uh, pack. There are 25 pieces. Each piece contains 10 milligrams of Delta 9 THC per gummy. How do they get away with that? I don't really know. <laughs> it's It has to deal with how everything is derived and how they're deriving the THC uh, or the Delta 9 THC. It's all hemp derived and it's mixed in and they're just able to put a concentrate that is higher into the gummies. That's just a crazy smart loophole and you can just order these online and they're just regular Delta 9 gummies. They're great. They're super potent. Before I got into these, I was in their HHC gummies, which are also great and super potent, but the links in the description or, or whatever of this episode, whether you're viewing this on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, whatever, the affiliate link for the Black Raspberry gummies specifically is what I've been using lately. They really help me with sleep. They help me with appetite, you know, especially with me. If, if you're a long time listener, you'll know that I've dealt with eating disorders and still do. Um, this has made all the difference uh, uh, for me. I, getting the munchies as a byproduct that helps with my mental health um, it helps me eat uh, and, and helps me sleep has, has been great as so I don't have to rely solely on Xanax which we all know there's unhealthy reasons to have to take that every single day so this lets me kind of swap things out and it's, it's fantastic the other product relates a little bit more to what we've been talking about today and that is their Celestial Blend Disposable sour citrus diesel man these things all taste like shit to me i want to be honest <laughs> but i'm not smoking them because they taste good uh sour citrus diesel sounds like it would taste like sour citrus but with a little bit of a cut to it no this is mostly just it's got the terpenes that are in every single cart <laughs> that, that you've ever <laughs> dealt, with, dealt with before anyway this uh the celestial blend specifically is aptly named in my opinion so it's a combination of delta eight which as we've learned it's basically just slightly less potent Delta-9. It's 89% Delta-8. It's got live C- CBD rosin in it at 5%. And then to top it all off, THCP at 2.5%, which doesn't sound like a lot, but that's the exact kick you need. If you think of THCP as being 30% more potent than Delta-9, then uh, 
2.5 percent quite a lot and the last little bit of it is made up of about 0.2 percent thca and then you got your terpenes and all that kind of stuff um and then the thca as we know is just regular delta 9 it's really does their description says it creates a, a potent experience that will have your mind wandering the cosmos and your body floating among the clouds it's very uh flowery verbiage but i can tell you i took a rip off of this before i started recording i've said that three times in this episode this shit's good. <laughs> it's it's my go-to. I, I recently did try a, a Delta 9 vape from a shop that was following the Farm Bill's rules. It's just not good. And like I said, I just keep it around because I don't want to waste my money. So check that out. Check out the Celestial Blend vape and the Delta 9 gummies. Those are the products of my choice. Like I said, I like the black raspberry flavor. I'll have those products linked. Please go through my affiliate code for that. Um, if you are just a listener and you don't have access to the links, if you want to type in Echo's Box at checkout, you can give me a shout out. I think you might get a discount. I don't know. No promises. But you do get credit for, uh, I get a finder's fee and it doesn't cost you anything. So always enter Echo's Box at the code, even if you uh, don't get anything for it. That would that would be great. You're going to get some great products and I get a little bit of extra money to help support our efforts here over at Echo's Box while you get a product and it doesn't cost you anything extra because you were going to get the product anyway, right? So go to moonwalker.com, uh, specifically through my affiliate links, and that's affiliate marketing while you're stoned on a podcast nobody listens to 101. All right, on to the list, the real thing that we, we actually care about. This is my ranking of what you should get and why and in what order. So we're going to start from best to worst, and there's going to be one small caveat, and that's for THCO, but we'll talk about why. So starting with the best of the best, in my opinion, Delta 9. St- straight to the point. You know, all the people who were potheads that were like, oh, well, I'm not it's synthetic. So I'm not. Yeah, I mean, for all of those reasons and more, it's not because the synthesis is bad. It's not because they're putting uh, chemicals in our marijuana to turn us all into frogs and then make us gay or whatever Alex Jones would say. Um, don't listen to stupid conspiracy people. But Delta 9 is straight to the point. It's weed. We know what it is. We know where it comes from. Even if it's synthesized, put it in some gummies. It's the same shit. It's fantastic, right? Can't miss with the classic. So that's at the top of the list. THCA comes next on this list because it's basically the same thing as Delta 9. We just heat it up. So any it, on its own, obviously, it's not at all the same thing because it's not psychoactive at all. But in the way that we're using it here in our tier list about what is most effective as a an alternative to smoking regular weed, THCA is basically the same thing. It's not even really an alternative. It's right there with it. Just as potent. You just got to heat it up and it's got to decarb. But they're one-to-one. Um, again, just because they are one-to-one chemically, that's what this list is going off, or off of. The product you got that was THCA may not have been infused with enough to matter or maybe it couldn't get hot enough to decarb it to get the effects. But... Chemically speaking, they're right next to each other. So I put it one below because it does have the element of heat uh, that's required. But Delta 9, THCA. The next on the list is HHC. HHC is great, man. I just smoked like a big joint, king size, rolly boy, before I came in here and recorded it. In, before I took the hit of the, the Moonwalker pen. That's how I'm doing right now. HHC is good. So I had flour, HHC flour that I'm trying, and it's it's not as potent, and that's why it's below Delta 9. It does not make me feel quite as elevated as Delta 9 THC does, but it does work, and it's pretty damn good. So yeah, it's fake, but it's damn close to the real deal. I can tell it's a little less potent, but it's really close. It does the job, and I'm not mad at it. So that's where, where it gets right up under THCA. Um, THCP is way 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 more potent and that little kick that i get off this vape really kind of shines through and helps me understand that that is the case um it's a little sketchy because it's it's one level of uh synthesis up so i say sketchy just jokingly we're not buying into those conspiracy theories um but it, it is is a little bit sketchier uh in terms of the fact that it is way more potent not because the chemical structure has any harm to it, but it's way more potent. And um, THCO also kind of is tied with this. So even though THCO is less potent than THCP, the process by which it's derived is similar. 
it's illegal, so I can't really speak more than that. But I mean, so is normal weed if we consider Delta Nine. Um, but it works. They both work. And uh, oh, the other reason THCO this is super important. I'm glad I didn't forget this. THCO has also been found in some studies uh, to not be safe to like inhale. So maybe keep it with tinctures or um, edibles and stuff like that. I don't know how accurate that is. So double back on that research yourself. But some people have added to the fear of THCO not only be from the DEA being like, oh, this is bad, but also the DEA has been supporting some of these researchers that have that have looked into. Um, in basic saying it's just be careful with spoken THCO. So I would avoid THCO altogether. So that's why this is a caveat and it's tied here in terms of potency. But it's actually at the bottom of the overall list. So avoid THCO is my general advice. Go with THCP. It's stronger anyway. And always stay up to date on news and research. If we find out that any of these compounds are uh, being derived in a way that makes them harmful to inhale into your lungs. Remember, inhaling anything other than oxygen into your lungs is always dumb. But if it causes a specific problem, you should just not do that. It doesn't mean the product is bad or the chemical is bad. There's no such thing as a bad drug, to quote Dr. Drew. Um, but you you got to be you know good to your body. You don't want to take something that's going to harm it 20 times worse. Um, so just always stay in the know. But in general, if you're smoking weed, you're smoking weed. It's one of the safest, safest drugs there is uh, as a colloquialism. That's, that's obviously completely subjective. <laughs> um, anyway, on to the next. THCP is great. It's in the middle um, just because it is stronger, like way stronger. So we, we don't want to get that high. Um, so <laughs> it's, it's right in the middle because it, it really does work. Just be mindful of your dose and you will get some pretty good effects out of it. All right, next on our list, and I believe this is fourth place. Can I count? Delta 9 is first, THCA is second, HHC is third, THCP is fourth, Delta 8 is in fifth. Why is it in fifth? Well, it works, but it's less potent than the others, and therefore just not preferred. Nothing wrong with it, though. I would absolutely take a hit off a Delta 8 pin, and that would be dope. I could take a couple hits and probably get just as high as I normally would. Delta 10 is going to be sixth on our list. I would only get it if I'm out of options. Like if there's nothing else around and somebody's got a Delta 10 pin, that's fine. It's it's not going to be as potent. I don't have anything else around. But it's fine. There's nothing wrong with any of them, like I said. Just an order of preference of what I would rather get would be Delta 9, THCA, HHC, THCP, Delta 8, Delta 10. Can I count? Was that 6? Delta 9, 1... A2, HHC3, THCP4, Delta 85, Delta 10, 6. Yep. And then THCO is at the bottom of the list. So technically tied with THCP in terms of uh, potency and what I would prefer to receive. But if you're going to give me something that is uh, two steps synthetically derived anyway, and I had to put in all that work to make it, I don't want your THCO. I want your THCP. It's going to be, I want your P. <laughs> Somebody clip that and make make me canceled on the internet. Um, yeah, I want the, I want the THCP dog because um, it's more potent. You can put in all that work, give me the more potent thing. So THCO is just trash at the bottom of my list. I would avoid it altogether, both in terms of legal status and in terms of potency. It's not not nearly as cool. So that's the list. I'm gonna say it again: Delta nine, THCA, HHC, THCP, Delta eight, Delta ten, and then THCO. But it's all weed, man. That That's what you really should have just learned today. It's, it's all weed. What you should really care about with any of these things is product quality. Moonwalker is a great reference. That's why I wanted to give you a place to go today, too. Um, so go check out Moonwalker. But, I mean, it's it's just weed. You know, the product's got to be good. You know, any chemicals, additives, or, or even just the ingredients to make the compound need to be sourced ethically and created in a safe, sterile environment. This is chemistry. You know, you don't want it to be this picturesque scene of every drug dealer ever. Um, so, yeah, the product's got to be good. Um, and the product's got to be trustworthy to a degree. Yes, again, it's all drugs. It's 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 real gray here, even in the even in the legal world of drugs, it's all gray. Um, 
but I, I, I liken it to like a, a pharmaceutical drug. Like if you have a healthy, responsible dispensary and grow factory or whatever, it's doing all this work. It is a bunch of scientists and lab coats running around doing this thing. That's not the case everywhere, but that's the kind of places that I want to buy from if possible. And at most places, at least make themselves out to be like that, whether it's marketing stick or not. Hopefully uh, that's not the case, but I typically trust Moonwalker's products uh, as a, a great starting point and you can kind of branch out on your own from there. Yeah. Um, other than that, that's the ranking. So as long as you're getting good product, everything I said will ring true because nothing changes about the science. Science is great. The compound is there. That is how each of the compounds work. That is how potent they are. And that is where they come from in a long roundabout way of a 20 something year old stoner talking to you on the internet. So I hope you, hopefully you learned something. Oh, I forgot to mention at the, at the beginning of this episode, you were listening to my song upside down. That's going to be off my upcoming album. That's that'll come off in like the come off. It'll come out in like the late spring, early summer. My song new low that was teased in the last episode comes out on March 15th and uh, lost in the Mons is playing the masquerade on March 23rd. So go, go come see my pop punk band in Atlanta. It'll be a, a ton of fun. Catch y'all later. Peace. Six and when the sun goes, I can catch a bottle.